Peter is coming to talk about uh, Ballarat Institution, which is the local pub. Uh, Peter has always had a long in interest in history. His father was a direct descendant of two convicts who arrived in Australia in 1790. His mother's family were digging for gold in Ballarat in the earliest days of the gold rush. He was born and bred in Melbourne, arriving in Ballarat to work as a music and drama teacher in 1978. He has also written several books, plays and a musical, and since retirement has been active with the Ballarat Tramway Museum, where he is the marketing manager. In his spare time, Peter is an active administrator on Wikipedia, takes lots of photos and spends hours searching the internet for information on Ballarat's hotels and local history for Redan. He is the administrator for the Redan page on Facebook, the creator of the Redanopedia and Hotels of Ballarat, and he's lived in Redan for 25 years. Welcome, Peter. As I said, I take lots of photographs for the Redanopedia. Um, if you haven't looked at it, you might see your picture there later today. Okay, the hotels of Redan. In the picture behind me, I don't know if I'm blocking the view there, am I? We've got a view from Hill Street. We're looking over the Chinese market gardens, which are here. And we're looking towards, over the Arrowee Creek, and we're looking at the mullet heaps of the uh, Sir Henry Locke Mine. Now, I was talking to a lady on Facebook and she told me that was the best mullock heap to slide down with a sheet of galvanised iron in 1940. That was fantastic. You'd get right into the creek with a bit of speed. I was talking to a mate of mine who was involved in the planting of the Yarrawee Creek, so you wouldn't recognise that view now from Hill Street because of all the trees. But he said even as recently... Do I need to turn that up? Yeah. Even as recently as 1980, you could walk down the the Mount Pleasant side of the creek it was open country. You can't do it anymore, it's all grown up. So our environment, our community is changing. 1860 looks very different now. It, um, it's changed, but the change is slow. So my interest in hotels is based on that because hotels were often a fixed identifiable point in the landscape. Um, if to give you an example, if I take you back to July 1876, two of Dennis Marr's children died. In the paper it said it would move from his residence in Darling Street, oh sorry, the funeral would move from near his residence in Darling Street, which was near Coles Hotel. Now straight away we can identify almost within a block or two of where the Marr family was living in Darling Street in 1876 because of that hotel reference. The information that I'm collecting comes from several sources. One is my work on the, the hotels of Ballarat, and I'm a bit of an egotist. I've decided to do 50 kilometres around Ballarat, and I'm now at 1,784 hotels that I've researched, and I've written the biography of 604 publicans. That was of Monday. It's probably different today because I was working there this morning. It's set up as a wiki, which means that it's designed for collaborative use and research, so all of you could contribute. Also, the Redan page. Now, this is a Facebook thing. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Facebook and are on Facebook, but if you're a member of the Redan community, you're interested in what's happening, get onto the Redan Facebook page. It's just celebrated its first birthday, and we're now at 169 members, or we were last night, might have gone up this morning. Everything that comes in, I record onto what I'm calling the Redanopedia. Imagine that, a Wikipedia just devoted to Redan. Fascinating stuff. Um, currently, 151 articles. So if you want to know about something in Redan, like where were the gypsies camped, or uh, what happened when they found the snake in the ceiling, check it out. Cole's Family Hotel. This on the corner of Darling and Ripon Street, right opposite my place. The pub and the church were the centre of community life. Um, based on the English tradition of the pub being the public house, 
That was where you went to eat, it was where you went to keep warm, it was where you went to meet your friends. And this tradition continued in Australia. The, um, what was happening in the community was happening in the pubs. There were births. There were celebratory dinners. Now, to give you an example, in this pub, the president of the Redan Football Club, Thomas Blight, he had a celebratory dinner. He was the publican, but he just won the, raff, the, won the uh, lottery, became very rich. And just to follow on from Doug, spent it all on a trip to Kalgoorlie to try and get richer and came home broke and ended up in the pub at Natamak. Um, Thomas Blight, when he was in the pub, fights were common. And one of these customers decided to have a go at him one day in 1892. What the bloke who threw the first punch didn't realise was that the bloke on the other side was one of Ballarat's famous boxers, a Mr McIntyre, and he decked the fella and dropped him to the floor so he was still unconscious when the police came to charge him. Um, death and murder. There was a murder in this hotel, right opposite my place, 1900. They were arguing about the merits of the Boer War and it resulted in a fatal punch. What do you call it? The coward punch, I think, is the story. Inquests. We didn't have big spaces for inquests. They were all held in the pubs. So in this pub, Andrew Cole was a very rich young man. He'd been one of the original tributors in the Band of Hope Mine. His dad owned the pub. Sadly, he became a, a tragic alcoholic and by the age of 25, took himself back down to the Band of Hope Mine and threw himself into the puddling machine. Um, what they could extract of him, they took back to the pub for Dad and to hold an inquest at 25. Political meetings. July 1887. So many people came to a, a meeting by a bloke who wanted to get onto the Ballarat Council that they were spilled out onto the footpath in Darling Street. The guy's name was, uh, I look here, John Wikes. And do you know what he had to say? The council was spending too much money on the bloody lake and the gardens and not enough in Redan and the streets were a quagmire and you should vote for him. I don't know whether he got on or not, I'll have to find that out. There were mining company meetings. There was sport. Now I've mentioned the football club, but did you know that Redan was one of the centres of the Iron Coits competition? And that in fact the Australian Iron Coit champion was a Redan policeman. And every pub in Redan had an Iron Coit court in the backyard. So if you find something that looks like a very large bit of iron around, that might be what it is. The first fire alarms were installed in Ballarat in 1900, 30 of them, and one of them was right outside Cole's Family Hotel. So this is sort of really quite central to the community. Seven years ago, there were still two pubs in Redan. Today, there is none. Now, some pubs have a long history and they've become well-known landmarks. This is the Atlantic been on this site since 1864. Very famous, very famous publican, Daniel Brophy. But I think the story of Daniel Brophy in the Atlantic Hotel is so long and involved and complex that I will leave that for the next talk. There's one for Emily to book in. Um, yet this pub, the Atlantic, is built on the site of an earlier pub, which was the Prince Charlie, which was open, we know, sometime before 1859. And the building burnt down in 1882, which is when they rebuilt it. Some other pubs, like the Globe there, which most of you probably will still remember, you know, it was only demolished in 2017. Um, this is a bit of a, a trap for a researcher in hotels. You look up Globe Hotel on Trove, there were seven Globe Hotels in Ballarat, just to uh, make it more complex, not including the ones that were in other areas nearby. But what I remember the Globe Hotel looking like is different. In this little glimpse here, this is 1960, the Globe Hotel, and a lady has just brought in a photograph of the Globe Hotel taken before the turn of the century when it was just a wooden building, so things change. This, this pub, this was where you went to have a drink when you were 14 in 1906. 
This is where you went in uh, 1923 to get a cheap whiskey. The reason it was cheap was because the publican would had a quarter of it was water. If you were thirsty on Christmas Eve in 1933, into the globe and you'll get a beer. But it was run by a bloke called Germain. Now I said inquests were often held at the pub. This was a very sad inquest. And you'll notice in that photograph that behind the tram you can see Germain's Prince of Wales store. Germain was also, his brother was the publican. Here's the story, I'll take it from the Star newspaper. Leslie Germain, aged eight years, and Kenneth Baxter, aged 12 years, yesterday morning went to play at the old heaps at the Star of the East Mine. The boys left their home shortly after 10 o'clock and secured a couple of picks, which they began to dig in the debris. Not far from them were some other lads who were also enjoying themselves playing in the sand. For some time, everything went on safely. But suddenly there was an outcry from the spot where Germain and Baxter were digging. A large portion of the heap had broken off from the main body and it fell directly where the two lads were. It covered Baxter right up to his neck. Germain apparently was the nearer to the heap and he was completely buried with the exception of his hands, which were subsequently seen protruding from the sand. Alan Wilkie, Reggie Brown and Frank Duggan at once set to work in the hope of digging them out. They soon had Baxter free and when he was released, he could walk away. And they got some of the stuff off Germain, with the exception of one large piece of mullock, which weighed about 200 weight. This had fallen right on the unfortunate little chap, and his death must have been instantaneous. Realising that the next best thing to do was to get further assistance, the three boys ran off and told Mrs Riley, who lived not far away. So she told the baker, who was visiting her place at the time, and they rushed across to the scene of the tragedy. The news quickly got out and Mr Germain, who was the licensee of the Globe Hotel, lost no time in getting to the locality and after some difficulty succeeded in removing the mullock which had struck his son. Having done that, he carried the boy home. Meanwhile, word of the mishap had been sent to doctors Donnelly and Spring and they rushed to Redan and tried restorative measures for some time without avail. Some pubs have disappeared. And if you look out the window, you're, we're looking diagonally opposite across to the site of the Antwerp Hotel, which is on the other side of the uh, soccer ground. Now, as Doug's told you, the soccer grounds were once big holes in the ground where they got the bluestone out. In 1873, a man named Owen Carl left the house of a relative named Cornelius on Thursday night in order to go to his house at the swamp which we now call Lake Wenderee, of course. To do this, he had to reach Pleasant Street near the Antwerp Hotel. Yesterday morning, he was found in a quarry in the vicinity, quite dead. The deceased had walked unsuspectingly to his death, as evidenced by the marks of his feet at the brink of the precipitous perpendicular wall of stone forming the side of the quarry. On falling, he had clutched at the edge of the bank and the marks of his fingers being apparent on the soil. His feet also touched the surface halfway down and a crushed thistle, his hat and a pipe showed the place of his fall. From where he had fallen to, he had walked some 50 yards and had sat down on a stone at an angle formed in the side of the quarry and here he was found dead, sitting with his right hand holding his arm, which upon examination was shown to be broken and bloody. Probably it will be found that he received his death injury by falling on his head. The spot is a quarry reserve, which is bounded by no less than four streets. The subsequent inquest at the Antwerp Hotel said he broke his neck. Some hotels, we only have a document to prove their existence. I still don't know where they are. So we've got Philip Schwambach's Sir Charles Darling Hotel in Darling Street. Now, I have a theory that this later became Cole's family hotel, but it's only a theory and I can't prove it. And Williams Hotel, all I know is that it was licensed to a Mr Williams in 1862 in Redan. No other clues at this point. Some other hotels have left Redan. Um, the 1860 mining map that I think is behind me, yes it is, shows the borders of Redan, but the borders, as Doug has said, changed. So things like the Redan Hotel, 
is no lo was no longer in Redan, it's uh, almost up at Lucas. The uh, Baltic Hotel was over in Kent Street. The Brewery Hotel, the Golden Empire, O'Connor's were in Drummond Street, but just on the wrong side of Sebastopol Street. But they were all described as Redan hotels at the time. This is a list of the 18 hotels that I found so far. Now, I said this was a work in progress. When I started, when I'd agreed to do the talk and I thought, oh gee, it's getting close, I better check out where the Redan pubs were, I had nine on the list. So over the last two weeks, the list has grown. So we're now at 18. I'm sure there are going to be more. Now, photos of pubs are not easy to find, and I thank the person who brought one in today because it's been fantastic. If you have a photo of a pub in Redan at any time, I would love to see it. But what we've got behind me is just a fleeting glimpse of the Redan Hotel in the 1930s. It's behind the tram. <laughs> it, um, you'll be pleased to know that the Redan, this is the Redan Club Hotel. In 1869, it was described as a disorderly house because it allowed music and dancing. It also had a woman publican at one stage. Women were quite often publicans in Ballarat. It was one of the few sort of businesses and industries that women were able to take on as equal terms to the men. But there were some problems if you were a female running a hotel. And uh, one of the publicans of the Redan Hotel was Eugenie Anseldi. Now she claimed that she was raped in the bar by a customer. Now she tried to get help from the police camp that was on the other side of Skipton Street, just near the APCO but was assaulted then in the middle of Skipton Street. The police said that this could not possibly have happened because they would have heard her screaming. Man got off. Hotels also had to provide accommodation as part of their licence. What is amusing with the Redan Club Hotel is that their accommodation wing was in a little wooden cottage next door. Didn't quite make it into the pub. Here's a picture of the Redan uh, club hotel site taken in the 1970s and uh, it looks even different again now because of the big tyre power store on that corner. Is it? Yes. Mid 80s. This is where I'm sourcing my, you must be Annette. <laughs> you, you get a credit on the end here. <laughs> yeah? In a talk on pubs. <laughs> um, we're at the Grandstand Hotel. The Grandstand, the Grandstand Hotel was near the Miners Racecourse, and I know it was on this block of land I suspect that this building that's still there, the house, is the, is the Grandstand Hotel. Just have a look at the uh, photograph. It's built right onto the edge of the street. And there are almost no other houses in Redan where the side wall of the house is actually along the footpath, which makes me a little bit suspicious. Particularly, in 1910, three blokes broke in through the cellar doors, which were on the footpath of the Grandstand Hotel, and pinched a cask of beer. Now we've been talking about women in hotels. In 1909, a couple of light-fingered blokes reached over the bar and took money out of the till. Now the judge had this to say. His Honour, in referring to the evidence in regard to robberies from the tills of public houses, spoke strongly respecting the employment of young girls as barmaids. Several of the witnesses called by the Crown were, he said, mere girls employed in the bars, robbed by the prisoners before the court. It was very deplorable that such little bits of girls should be found serving liquor over a bar. It tended to tempt young fellows into the bar and teach them to drink. <laughs> I know where my problem started, I can see. Next, we're moving up to the Western Hotel. Isn't it good that one end of the Western Ocean Hotel, sorry, where Barry James is now, at one end of Redan, we have the Western Ocean Hotel, and at the other, the Atlantic. 
it's sort of quite nautical. And then when I was thinking nautical, then I remembered the Globe Hotel, where the publican of the Globe Hotel uh, was a fellow called Thomas Robinson at one stage, and he was captain of the Prince of Wales, a ship which was the first ship to sail up the Yarra River without a pilot in 1852. And Robinson wrote in his will, as his last request, that he be carried to the grave by four old sea captains. <laughs> but about the Western Ocean Hotel and about what, what were Redan people like in general, here's a lovely description from 1885 with a letter to the, the editor of the Ballarat Star. Dear Sir, for the past 12 months, I have observed mobs of the most criminal looking larrikins nightly congregated at various places in Skipton Street. Some time ago, I observed a crowd of about 20 roughs marching in procession from the corner of Dana Street to Dawson Street along Skipton Street, singing the most filthy songs possible. There is always a crowd of larrikins at the corner of Doveton Street and Skipton Street who use the most insulting and immoral expressions to nearly every female that passes by. And there is a mob of larrikin young men all day of a Sunday and up till 10 o'clock on Sunday nights congregated at the side of the Western Ocean Hotel who have some low, filthy remark to make as respectable females pass by. And until Sebastopol is reached, mobs of larrikins are stationed at certain points, insulting passers-by as they go to and from church. I have never seen these mobs of fellows interfered with by the police. In fact, the police are nowhere to be seen. Hundreds of times I have walked from Dawson Street to Sebastopol at about 10 o'clock at night and have never met a policeman. I think that plainclothes police should be told off and to put a stop to larrikinism and drink selling of a Sunday. It is a fact that at any hour of the day or night, drink can be obtained at nearly any hotel in Skipton Street. There may be exceptions, but I do not know of any. Signed, yours, eyewitness. <laughs> One of the things that we're doing with the Redan community is we're reenacting the uh, kite flying that the Chinese used to do in Redan. I'm now thinking that um, having a group of larrikins marching up Skipton Street singing rude songs is another possibility. So we may have to form a little choir for the purpose. Um, what happened to the Western Ocean Hotel? It burnt to the ground in 1915. The uh, Trades Union Hotel in Drummond Street, it burnt to the ground in 1920. This leaves us just towards the end. This is a picture of the Atlantic Hotel with the Band of Hope Mine in the background. All the stories that I've told can be found on the Redanopedia. They can be found on the Hotels of Ballarat website. And if you've got stories or share photos to share, then we love them on the Redan Facebook page. All of these are community projects. You're the community. So this is me inviting you.